and now we can open NinjaTrader. All right, we have our chart. It's just a simple setup with a couple of indicators which will be used in future videos. But for right now, let's just get Bloodhound on the chart and move forward. So Bloodhound is an indicator. By the way, if you're wondering, Blackbird, the other major product that we sell, is a strategy. So if you're looking for one, that's where they will be. So indicators window for your chart. All of our stuff is under the Shark Indicators folder near the top. Double click that and then double click Bloodhound Ultimate to add to your chart. If it says trial or anything else like that, that's okay. Um, it's Bloodhound Ultimate that you're looking for um, and it may still be on trial for you. Okay, we've added it to our list of indicators for this chart. Now we don't need to touch anything over here, we just click OK. Now by default, Bloodhound starts in a blank state, right? So we have this new Bloodhound panel at the bottom here, but we have not yet told it what to do, and so there's no signals, nothing is coming from Bloodhound. So to open up the Bloodhound window, the main window, you'll see at the top of your chart there's a button that says Empty Template. Click that. First time you load it, it may have a loading screen, no problem there. All right, so this is Bloodhound 2.0. Now before we proceed, it's always a good idea to save your work, even if you're just messing around. So you'll notice, if you're used to the old version of Bloodhound, you'll notice the interface is totally different. Uh, to save a file, we'll go to the main tab up here and go Save As. And we'll save it as Bloodhound Getting Started. We're now working in a file which has a name, and if we go back to the chart, and sometimes you have to reload it to get it to change, you'll see now it has the name of the file we saved. So that way you won't get lost if you see that. Okay, so we bring Bloodhound back up, and just to get a quick view of what Bloodhound does, let's do the simplest possible thing with Bloodhound, which is use the bar direction solver. You will over time learn what all these uh, solvers, function nodes, and logic nodes do if you're new to this, but let's just add the bar direction to the chart uh, just to see what it does. So I've selected that from the solvers window and it added the bar direction node to the board here. Now I can click on the top part and drag it around, move it around, and then to connect it to the result node, which is where everything will connect into, we'll just click from the bottom sort of main part of this and drag it over and connect it. Once it's connected to the result node, let go of your mouse, and you can see right away it's producing an output on our chart. These are what we call signals, right? So on this bar, you've got a long signal, short signal here, okay? Now the bar direction is very simple. All it does is give you a signal that matches the direction of the bar. So this bar closed up, and so we get a long signal. It has more settings and options that you can adjust, but that's the idea. Let's just do a quick rundown of the changes and some of the features that are useful to know about for our old timers, but this will also be useful for a newcomer as well. Um, so first of all, obviously the interface has changed. Some of the new features up here that just make life easier are undo, redo, copy and paste, so I can uh, copy the bar direction solver and then paste it here again. We now have a snippets feature so if you wanted to take a group of logic and create uh, basically a template of that logic we can click add snippet and it'll create a snippet in the snippet library. You can see I have one from before and then if you want to reuse that anywhere um, at any time you can just click it and drag it onto the board and there is a pre-made set of logic that I made earlier. So that's a new feature. Now inside this Bloodhound Getting Started file, uh, you can have multiple logic template rules or logic rules. Now in this new version of Bloodhound, uh, all of those logic templates are going to be tabs along the top here. So to create a new logic template, we'll click this new logic button here, and that creates a new set of rules. So I can go back and forth between them um, at my will. Now it's a good idea to rename them so it's really clear to you what's going on. So if I right click on the tab and go rename, there's the uh, rename field. So let's imagine a scenario which will be covered in a future video actually. Um, let's say this set of rules is for entry signals. So I'll just literally call it entry signals and click away. And then on this one, let's call it exit signals because you can have a set of rules whose only purpose is to exit trades. That's a more advanced topic, but it is covered in a future Getting Started video. Okay, 
and those will show up above the chart in this drop down. Now we need, do need to refresh. This is one of the few things that we do need to reload the chart. So reload Ninja Script, and you can see them here. We can switch back and forth between them um, just very conveniently. Okay. If we open Bloodhound back up, if you want to switch between them up here, you'll notice that this one to the left stays green even when we're on the exit signal one, right? And that's because you can switch between them without sending the output to the chart, right? So if I switch between these, the chart remains the same. So if I want to switch between the active one, the one that's actually showing on the chart, simply double click the tab, right? So I double click and it highlights it and it also makes the result node green uh, just as another sign of which one is, is active. Okay? I know I'm just rushing through these details. If you're brand new to Bloodhound, this may be overwhelming. Don't let that happen in your brain. Just remember that there are tons of learning materials. So in the next video, uh, you will learn how to detect a moving average crossover, adding an ADX level to that, and then in the future videos, you'll even learn how to add multiple time frames and then back testing. All right, see you in the next video. And if you do get stuck or have any questions, we are always available by email. And also, while I'm on that subject, if you go onto our website under the support menu, remember, we also offer free weekly training workshops, most weeks. Uh, so it's a Zoom webinar, Bloodhound Thursdays at noon, Eastern, Blackbird is Friday. Register here and you can join live and ask questions, see things demonstrated live, especially the first several of these workshops once Bloodhound 2.0 is released. Uh, we'll, I'm sure, have a lot of people coming in and asking questions and seeing Zach demonstrate far more advanced stuff than I've been doing here. And if you're brand new to Bloodhound and you're just curious what these tools are capable of, scroll down under Recorded Workshops and click on either of these boxes to reveal a huge list, I'm talking hundreds, of topic videos. They're cut out from those weekly workshops, so you can learn a lot just from other people's ideas. Um, it's, it's a great learning resource uh, that I can't emphasize enough. All right, I'll cut this video off here, continue into the next one, and remember it is on the old version, but it's still useful, so follow along with it and let us know if you get stuck. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.